What's poppin' players? Welcome back to a Two Penny Games review. This time with lead reviewer Phil Shoemaker. Say hello to the people. How's it going? Phil, you, my friend, have been playing Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, uh, and you are our lead reviewer first to get us started, my friend. How deep in are you? Where are you at in the game, and how many hours have you played? Um, let me get a good count on my hours real quick. Uh, my PlayStation clock tells me, oh, there's no way this is right. I'm easily over 25 hours in this game. Um, I am currently, I want to say halfway through chapter six. Okay. Of what? Um, do you know? Uh, I do not know. Okay. Um, still, you know, <laughs> I, I, I'd say it's probably like a good 40%. Okay. If I had to guess. Okay. Well then, go um, go right ahead, my friend. Uh, how? What is your review of Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth for me is my first um, foray into this newer version of Yakuza. Yakuza Zero being the very first Yakuza game I played. That one being more of a beat 'em up style. This one is turn based. Um, and let me tell you, Tavin, it works damn well yeah um it, it it is very very fun this is some of the most satisfying turn-based combat i've had since sea of stars last year um that that much to say this game for me is my game of the year so far the 2024 is i mean granted it's only january but yeah. <laughs> 2024 is February, starting yeah. off with oh you know it came out in january this game um that's what I that's what I was getting at. It is currently February right now as we record this. Um but 2024 is starting out with a bang. Um with with this game and you might even say a banger because like a dragon infinite wealth is indeed banger certified. Um Ichiban Kazuga the main protagonist of of this story and like a uh, Yakuza like a dragon Yakuza 7 uh is a damn charming character and I I really like him a lot. Um, of course, he's not gonna he's not gonna replace Kiryu in my eyes. You know, the main protagonist of the rest of the Yakuza series. Um, but you know, with this being uh, Kiryu's like last game that we're gonna have him in, they do a really good job of keeping kind of the, the, it's a very good balance between the two protagonists. Well, okay, Ichiban being the protagonist, Kiryu taking on more of a supportive role. Um, you can still control Kiryu in your party. He's like one of your party members that you hang out with and help fight and stuff. Um, but you know, it's 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 just really good. I love the back and forth they have together. It's a very kind of master and apprentice style um thing they have, but like not so much like Kitty is obviously the master. It's they're very much just like really good friends. Um, and it, it's very cool to ha to see Kitty in that role that he's kind of always had throughout the series, the kind of fatherly uh you know typical macho man but like non-toxic masculinity kind of role um and ichiban kasuka is just a lovable uh what's what's the word uh himbo that's the word i used <laughs> he's very very brash very um like dumb in like the the fact that he just kind of says what's on his mind he um is very much like I don't know. He's just a lovable guy. Like he, he, he's, he just goes through, he goes through this entire game and he, at some point there's a character that robs him at gunpoint. And then two chapters later, he's best friends with, with Ichiban. Um, and you know, it's, it just shows, goes to show you how like awesome of a, of a character Ichiban is and how much I've grown to, uh, to admire him. And as, as I, as I go through his story here and it makes me really want to play, uh, like a dragon Yakuza seven, which I haven't played. Um, and this game is the, the ver sheer variety. I, I came into this game expecting variety, but th there's variety on variety on variety in terms of gameplay. There's a whole Pokemon mini game. It's called Sujimon. You, you capture these perverts and you make them fight each other. Uh, you capture them. You basically recruit them by giving them like gifts and then they help you fight. Um, there is a whole um, Pokemon Snap type game where you ride around on a trolley uh, 
and you you take pictures of these guys in their underwear and okay. it's it's just really yeah it's just really goofy um as to be expected with with yakuza um or like a dragon um RGG Ryuga uh, Gotoku, which is the studio, Go- Gotoku, yeah, the studio that makes uh, Yakuza and uh, Like a Dragon, they've really outdone themselves oh, with, wow. with this game. Um, it's, to me, this, this, is, this game is damn near a masterpiece. I'm, and I'm, matter of fact, I'm going to call it tentat- tentatively a masterpiece, and I'll, I'll come up with an update that sometime down the line when I finish the game and confirm that it's a masterpiece if I do like where the story's going. And if it keeps going where I think it's going, I think it's a shoe in to be a masterpiece on our scale. Um, the setting of Hawaii is so awesome. And the, the world that they, they gave us to explore this Island. Um, it's just so rewarding and the, the, they scale the rewards you get as you progress so well. Um, you get, a sheer like dopamine hit anytime you see some kind of progress bar. Uh, each one has these, I think it's like five different personality traits or five or six different personality traits that get increased by doing certain things um, in the world. Um, there's like intelligence, there's uh, charisma. Okay. There is, yeah, you know, there's like all these stats that kind of yeah. increase as you do different uh, tasks. And it's just really like, there's a whole thing where you, I even get a dopamine hit by, waving at people on the on the side of the road and seeing their little like affinity uh, bar go up You're like <laughs> oh yeah you become friends with these like strangers on the street because it's just that like tight knit of a community they 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 do a good job of showing how friendly of a place hawaii is while also showing the criminal underground which may or may not be there i've only been to hawaii once um <laughs> um but yeah i'm i'm really enjoying my time with this game and like I said, I would be very surprised if this game gets dethroned as my game of the year. Well, it's very high praise and I'm very glad to hear it because Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is something that I'm uh, very interested in playing. Uh, but there's just so much so many other games releasing right now and and I'm on different assignments at the moment. So who knows if or when I'm going to get my hands on it. But talk to me, talk to me about all the variety of uh, game modes here. Yakuza known very much for its different activities and mini games that it can provide yeah. and so forth. Uh, uh, talk to me. Uh, you mentioned the, uh, you called it, what, what was it, Dujimon? Sujimon. Sujimon. Uh, and you like that, but talk to me about the, the like heavily advertised uh, uh, game mode where it was more of like an Animal Crossing light thing. Ah, uh, yeah. So Dondoku Island, Dondoku Dondoku, I think it's Dondoko, not Dondoku um, Island. Um, it's your typical crafting kind of build up this island from. Uh, it's like super polluted and there's garbage all over it. You gotta you gotta build it back up to like its former glory and make it a more hot tourist destination like it was back in the past. Um, <clears throat> and you can invite people from the the mainland to Dondoko Island to have them come visit and you know just it's like a tour <clears throat> excuse me a tourist destination that you just build up from the ground up um and i think it, the the bones are there um i personally am not that big of a fan that's really for me the the main thing i i don't like about this game okay um but for people that like this sort of game i can see where people are spending tens of hours uh on this island and just and just uh building it back up and you spending a lot of their time i i saw uh, i was watching a review earlier someone um in their i think 70 ish hours of playing they already spent 15 of those hours on dundoko island oh wow um which to me that percentage just doesn't add up you know uh I just it just didn't really click with me. I I like the the crafting and going and going around the uh, little island and there's a whole fishing thing. Um, it's different from like the regular yakuza fishing. It's like you you throw, um, what are they called? It's not a spear, but like uh, what are, I forget what they call a a fishing thing. Uh, harpoon, harpoon. That's what it is. You throw harpoons into the water and you catch these fish and you catch bugs just like in Animal Crossing. You uh, craft little uh, furniture pieces and you arrange them around your island to make them to make it like m- the most appealing uh, to tourists and all that. Um, 
and there's these really goofy like mascot characters that kind of uh help you run the island and that 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 part's kind of charming and i like i like the um the premise of it it just it, like i said it just didn't really click with me the only like animal crossing type game i've really played was uh new horizons back in 2020 and i feel like the only reason that game clicked with me so hard is because of the the climate that we were in in mm. 2020 and the fact that no one was able to go outside and we're just locked down and all that um but you know i think for people that that that's their cup of tea they're going to have a lot of fun with Dundoko Island, um, I just I, I'm I, I seem to be in the minority when it comes to people uh, talking about Dundoko Island. Okay, mm. all right, that's fair. Uh, when we reviewed Yakuza Zero for the Game Club, um, I, I I really really liked it, and I really liked that game, and and it it op- it's opened the door for Yakuza entries as as a whole, and I want to keep playing more entries and more uh, games in the franchise. But uh, my my biggest critique probably with those games is uh the the biggest one i have is um the dialogue kind of droned on and on and on very long cut scenes that you know kind of didn't necessarily need to be so long uh and just the 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 writing of the game i found pretty inconsistent how is that translating here now obviously a couple of titles later uh since yakuza 7 uh 0 in like 2016 um, I think it's still really solid. You're still going to have these really long cut scenes um, with the, uh, because I think that there, there's a real big focus on um, the characters of Ichiban and, and Kiryu and their dynamic and um, the, the whole thing that that's at least what I'm, what I'm um, getting in this story. It's Ichiban. He's trying to, to meet his mother um, who is a native Hawaiian um, so that's why he is he is sent to to Hawaii in the first place is to is to track her down, um, and you know it's it's very it's very like moving in ways because he doesn't see her as his mother he just really wants to meet her and find out all about her um, because they they do a good job of they don't do a they don't do a great job of of showing you. Um, kind of like catching you up on the story of, of like a dragon, you know, cause a seven. Um, and by that, I just mean like, there's these really short, um, bits where it'll be like, Hey, I'm going to pray at this altar. Uh, I want to think about, uh, my old boss and the, basically the character is from, um, the original, like a dragon. Um, and kind of catching you up on Ichiban's story. I know this boss that, um, or this uh, character you're talking about. I know who this is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think his name's Arakawa. Uh, yes. I could be wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so yeah, so they, 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 like I said, they don't do a great job of catching you up. I myself, since I haven't played uh, like a dragon, I watched like a story summary. Okay. Just to kind of like catch myself up because if you're gonna start. With infinite wealth, I would not recommend it. I think you should at least. I I I I don't think I did this the right way. I think I should have at least played, um, yeah, like a dragon first before hopping in infinite wealth. But I feel like that didn't really take away too much, uh, from me. But I do wish that I had experienced uh the original like a dragon, so I I would get more of this like payoff and like more of this background of Ichiban. Um, but even then with the story summary, I feel like I got a good enough way, but you know, there's always that piece in me that's going to be like, oh man, if this was like more organic, right? Like I, I'm getting this, uh, like piece by piece and, and, and I already, I'm already, I'm already rooting for Ichiban where that's where I feel like some people who are just hopping into infinite wealth, they might think that this game starts a little slow. Mm. Um, so I think like basically all of chapter one is like very much like introducing um how this game works um and like kind of tutorializing the um the combat and you know yeah your these personality traits i was telling you about um yakuza zero do... and and because i played mm, maybe 10 hours probably not even that much of uh mm-hmm. yakuza like a dragon and both both uh both yakuza zero and that one started slow too so yeah um, and you know, it's, it's, it's still going to be like this where like, if you don't, if you're not already kind of attached to these characters, it, it, it I, I can kind of see where it might be, uh, kind of, kind of hard for you to, to, to get into, but for somebody like me who, who fell in love with Yakuza Zero and the Yakuza series as a whole, um, I was all in coming in. Um, 
And I don't know, man. I just, this game is just really speaking to me. And like I said earlier, it's got some of the most satisfying um, turn-based combat. Talk and, to me about that. You know, how, how, does, how does that function? What makes it different than other turn-based games? Yeah, so it's very it's very much um, active. Not in the time, not not in the way that like Final Fantasy VII has like the active time thing, where like you can basically lose a turn for your uh, opponent's other thing. Instead, it's um, the turn order is based on the stat uh, that's agility. So okay. if your character's agility is high enough, you can basically have like two turns in a row. Oh wow! Um, which is which is super cool. Um, Kiryu himself, uh, when he fights, he has three uh, three different stances. Uh, he they use rush, you know, you got brawler and you got beast, which is all still there, which I think is really cool. Um, so with rush, it's basically essentially you do get two attacks in a row. Um, there are these sometimes an enemy will be blocking, so they reduce your damage, but you can get rid of their block by either attacking them in the back or using a grappling move. And that's like you, you can use either a skill or kitty use beast form where he grabs the person and breaks their guard. Um, and it's just really interesting. Yeah. It's really interesting to kind of, um, use these different abilities. Uh, and each like enemy has like a different weakness. Like there are these, um, there's like projectile damage. There's like blade damage. Um, there's elemental damage and like each different kind of, uh, enemy that you'll face has a different kind of weakness. And it's really cool to see on your skills and you go through and be like, Oh, I have this, um, fire skill and this enemy is weak to fire damage i can use this and do an extra amount of damage and um when you're going uh in and in fighting these these battles um your basic attack is usually gonna provide a knockback to an enemy okay. and you can chain yeah and you can chain knockbacks uh to other enemies so you can knock an enemy into another one and do even more damage um so you'll can you can basically like domino effect these enemies uh onto the ground and then if you can attack fast enough onto the enemy as they're on the ground, you'll do even more damage oh, wow. for okay. your next character. <laughs> um, and it's just really satisfying kind of going through the turn order. And there, there are fights. Um, some of the harder fights, they're, they're, they're very hard. I, had, uh, I got stomped a few times the other day because uh, I, I, I was trying to fight a, uh, a loyalty quest uh, kind of jumped these people's levels up to a point that uh i wasn't at okay uh because like that's another thing is uh you'll with your companions that you kind of fight with in your party um you're you'll have like a little loyalty meter i can't remember what they call it it's it's basically like an affinity meter where like the more time you spend with them the more um you walk around the island and they're like oh this place has my favorite kind of coffee or this place uh reminds me of my like favorite hobby that i do there's like a bingo card that pops up and um it'll be like oh now i know this person's favorite sport or like their favorite drink oh you know? okay and it, it, yeah you get like a bingo and it cr increases their affinity like a shit ton so you get a bunch of levels onto their affinity and there's these um yeah yeah so you go into this uh bar like your kind of like home base kind of thing and you'll have a drink with them and you'll you'll just talk talk with them um and kind of get some background on uh their like their story and all that and um there's some dialogue options which will when you choose the option it's not gonna it's not like a oh i'm gonna get less affinity for choosing this option i'm gonna get more affinity for choosing this option it's instead increasing uh ichiban's uh stats it's increasing his uh intelligence his charisma his um uh i think it's like passion is another one and each of those options will increase one of those um things and most of the time not most of the time uh a good amount of time when you when you do one of these little drinks there will be a little quest you have to go do where either you have to go fight some guys that um this person has had like a run-in with before or something like that um and it's just it's it's a really fun time uh it, it makes me way more attached to these characters in my party other than kitty you you know um Cause you know, who, why would I not love my, my, my dad, you know? <laughs> <laughs> fair, fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, th this sounds great. Uh, you've got me very, very excited to, to try infinite wealth out. Phil, is there anything else you want to leave us off on before we start wrapping it up here? Um, I kind of just want to put another, um, emphasis on the sheer variety of things to do in this game. 
Um, so there's your typical karaoke. Mm-hmm. There's um, gambling. There's that Pokemon Snap minigame I was telling you about. There's collecting the Sujimon. There's battling the Sujimon, which, I mean, that's like four and a half because that's kind of the same thing, it's, but it's yeah. a whole other aspect to this whole uh, sub-story slash minigame. Um, uh, that's another thing. The sub-stories in this game, typical Yakuza fair. Um, okay. Most, like, I, I'd say in Yakuza 0, I, I had a lot more fun with the sub-stories uh, and just how goofy they were. Um, than some parts of the narrative. Um, okay. And yeah, but you know, I think the overall narrative still shined uh, or shown. I don't know the fucking past tense of, of shine um, in Yakuza 0. But there are some genuinely, there's there's a, a sub story in this game that legitimately made me tear up. Like it's, it's, it's very, it was very moving. Um, and by, at the same time, the like tonal shifts that go on through that sub story's like arc. Like this, yes, this sub story had an arc. Um, <laughs> it it made me laugh and it made me cry. So you know, it it there, I cannot tell you how many times this game has made me laugh out loud. But to get back to the variety, there's um this whole uh like I can't remember what they call it. They they call it like it's like a a, a phone system where like you can um call backup in a fight. And you'll get uh, points on this other subsystem uh, that make it like that discount these fighters to help come help you later. And then you can kind of form relationships with them while you fight with them. Interesting. Yeah. And then there's a um, like an online dating, like a Tinder kind of thing, which you can do, which I told you about. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend playing that in your living room in front of people it, hey, it, it gets great. it gets a little too spicy for 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 uh <laughs> what i was looking for um and there's a lot of catfish in that in that mini game which is really funny um you can literally get catfished by a chicken by the way oh awesome uh yeah um there's also what am i missing um Anyway, there's a lot to do in this game, and you know, just if if you if you have a, a if you like Yakuza, if you like um, these kinds of games, if you like a, a silly kind of if 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 you if you're in if you're in for a good time, play this game. This game is a great fun, and you know, I I highly recommend this game. Okay, excellent, fantastic. I'm excited to play it, but I don't know when. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. that is going to be it for our. Uh, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth Review. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Let us know how you feel about the game down below. What excites you the most? And uh, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with a friend. We really, really do appreciate it. But all of that said, until next time, have a great time. And Phil, say goodbye to the people. See ya.